And not just better for me, but better for all of humanity, because that's part of my goal is to have the kind of doctoring that I do, at least on the technical side, be available to everyone. That's what I would like. And everyone's like you, sweetheart. No, I know that that's my point, though, is I think my colleagues who might say, oh, I'm going to stay away from that. No, absolutely no AI, chat GPT. They're missing the opportunity. And we've talked about this before, but they're missing the opportunity to actually be part of the database, to be part of how it gets trained. So I think the wave, the way that it's going, I think 20 to 25 years from now, actual human ideas and human creativeness and human writing and whatever is generated by humans is going to be sought after and so value valuable because you're going to have this whole world of AI generated everything. Yeah, I mean, I think, so where I agree with you is I think that in the world of art and creativity, you're 100% right. I think that human art will be even more valuable because of the fact that it is created by humans at a time when fewer and fewer humans can do that. It's like a custom-made wooden cabinetry that's made by hand today is worth way more than it was a few hundred years ago when there were a lot of carpenters out there. Now there's not a lot of master carpenters anymore. So that's a really... There's Ikea. There's Ikea. Like... So I agree with you in the world of creativity. And not that there's not any creativity in medicine. There is, right? But I think that... Especially in the naturopathic integrative holistic realm, that's not just an algorithm. So here's, yeah, so here's where I agree. The prompts that I give it are fundamentally different from the kind of prompts that you would get from a conventional medical doctor. Because the conventional medical doctor is going to ask something like, what do the guidelines say the proper treatment is for this condition? Or what is the most evidence-based treatment for blah, 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 right? And conversely, the kind of prompts that I'm going to be using are, you know, what, just as an example, what is the light, what are some medications that may be helpful based on their potential metabolic targets in this particular condition? So I'm actually having it do in silico research right then and there and think about, okay, this particular medication we know has affinity for these particular receptors, these particular genes, it upregulates this gene, downregulates that gene. Maybe that'll help, right? So I have a patient and literally it's, uh, she's got super early rheumatoid arthritis, right? So we've created a protocol using a combination of drugs and nutraceuticals, which target a lot of the genes that are involved in the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. And the goal is to reverse it so that in a year, she has no rheumatoid arthritis detectable in any kind of blood test. I'm excited because like on one level, historically, just using natural treatments, we can keep antibody titers low. We can kind of keep the rheumatoid arthritis in check, keep it from progressing kind of keep it stable, steady. But the possibility of actually reversing it and curing it, that's not something that I really would have even thought about a year ago. But now we have a clear pathway, right? Because we're working on what are the different mechanisms that are at play here on the molecular level, on the genetic level, how can we turn the right genes on turn the wrong genes off and bring this person back to a homeostasis. I'll be excited to see what happens. <laughs> but that's kind of, to me, it's in the questions that you ask. That's again, when you talk about the art of medicine, I mean, that's really the art of healing. That's at least on this AICI front, that's really where I see it. It's all about the questions and how you ask them and how you push back and 
require clarification. Yeah. Like you do. How, yeah. How to like train people, how to teach, how to teach people to mm -hmm. use collaborative intelligence in a way that doesn't deaden their minds or their essence, or their spirit. Yeah. I think, see, to me, that's really what college probably needs to become to some oh degree. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. The study was done on college students, by the way. Like, yeah. Because they're doing this thing where they just put the teacher's prompt in and just have ChatGPT generate the paper. And maybe they go in and change a few words. So they unchat GPT it so that the teacher can't catch them and then just turn it in. Meanwhile, they haven't even read the dang thing. I mean, that's absurd. That's a ridiculous social experiment.